In our previous video, we showed you how to remove the dash in a VW T3. Whilst that dash is out, it's gonna give you the perfect opportunity to replace or fix a multitude of things underneath the dash. My name's Lee, this is Coombe Valley Campers, and today we're gonna to be showing you how to replace the fan and motor in your dash heater, change the washer hoses, and deal with the electrics underneath your dash. The tools you are going to need today to do the three jobs we are doing, such as the wiring, replacing the heater box and doing the windscreen washer hoses are as follows. A selection of sockets and ratchets, a selection of spanners and screwdrivers. We have got some mole grips there to remove the shear bolts, a selection of trim tools to remove more delicate plastic items, a blade to cut the washer hoses and we've got some electrical trimping, crimping tools there to replace the terminals at the earth points. The first thing we did in the previous video was do a bit of a familiarization with what is in the dash. So we went over the dash clocks and all sorts of things. Now the dash is out, let's do the same thing again and just have a quick look at what we've got under here. I'm gonna start from the passenger side this time because there's some important things down here. Now I'm gonna get my handy pointer just a Phillips screwdriver and start with this end here. Now this is where the fuse panel, or this here is the fuse panel, and this is where the majority of the electrics are housed in your van. If I just move these two cardboard tubes out of the way, or well, one's cardboard, one's plastic, they attach to the box where the heater is. And you can see even more of these electrics. Now it looks quite scary, but it's really not that bad. You've got a loom going down to the front of the car. Sorry, this loom here goes to the engine and this loom here goes to the lights. That's it, there's one, two looms and they disappear down here. The rest of this wiring here goes to the steering column and to the dash switches. None of that you really have to mess with. The only thing we're gonna to have to play with today and have a look at is the electrics that have been added since this car was built. So for example, we've got some white cables here with some of these crappy blue connectors, which I absolutely hate. We've got some extra wiring here with some crappy red connectors, which I absolutely hate. Um, and there's just some other bits and pieces that I'm not happy with. So for the most part, we're gonna be removing them. But whilst we're down in this area, I just wanna point out these two items here. They're called the earth crowns. Now, if your van is anything like mine, it's got a bit of a leaky windscreen. And what happens is that leak can run down the dash or can even run down here, as you can see by this stain, and it can find itself onto some of these earth points here. Now, obviously earthing is very important when it comes to running electrics in your vehicle. So we're gonna take the opportunity whilst the dash is out to remove those earth crowns, clean them up and clean all the terminals that are attached to them as well, or replace them if needs be. So electrics is here. Moving over slightly to the right, we have got the motor for your windscreen wipers and the assembly is bolted down here and then heads underneath the front of the dash over to this side. We're not gonna be playing with the motor itself. However, if I can just point out this hose to you here, that is the windscreen washer hose. Now over the years, that can get brittle and cracked and it's a good thing to replace it whilst you've got the opportunity and whilst the dash is out. And we're gonna go over that with you today also. In the center of the cab, we have the big heater box. And we are gonna be removing this today to replace the fan and motor that is within it. Um, the fan motor sees, it's known on these vehicles that the fan motor sees. Um, so we are going to remove some of the wiring, remove some of the cabling in a step-by-step -step manner, and then we're gonna remove the whole box and replace the motor inside. Moving over still, these are the controls to the heater motor. As you can see, mine are covered in fag ash, which is lovely. We'll get that cleaned up. And if we'll bring you over to the other side and we can show you the driver side of underneath the dash. The first thing you'll notice this side is that the steering wheel and steering column are loose. Now that was necessary in the last video to remove the dashboard. So what we're gonna do is just but cut the bolts, hand tight up in these brackets, 
just to keep the steering column and steering wheel out the way of our knees so we can actually continue to do more work. So starting off from the center, we went over the heater controls there. They're very simply clipped into place and we can remove them easily to get to that heater box. And on this side, or either side of the steering column, you've got two looms. Now again, you don't have to change these, you don't have to chop these, you don't have to get confused by these at all. We have the multi-connector that goes in the back of the dash, we have the plugs that go in the back of the hazard switch, and we've got the plug that goes into the fog light switch, and that's it. So we don't have to worry about those at all. Obviously, if you have a higher spec van, there will be more leads, but as long as you can label them, that might help you out. On the left side, we have a plug that goes into our brake warning lamp, and we have the plug that goes into the back of the headlight switch. That's about it. For the center console, we've got the two little terminals that connect to the light for the heater panel, and we've got the switch for the heater as well, but we'll come back to that later. And that's about it. On a very simple van like this, there's not much to do. Um, the first thing we are gonna be concentrating on is the electrics. So we'll take you back over that side and make a start with the earth crowns and the terminals that attach to them. So we simply start with the electrics, but before we touch the earth crowns or anything, let's do a bit of digging as to what's going on here. We have one live cable here that seems to have a bullet connector, female bullet connector. It's been joined once and it's just connected to the back of a, I believe that is a permanent live terminal on the back of the fuse board. Now these earlier vehicles are quite easy to play with. You can just attach any terminal to the back of the fuse board and find yourself a source of either permanent or ignition 12 volt electrics. Um, this one was connected to the cigar lighter. I'm gonna remove this cabling because A, I'm going to be fitting some extra wiring. I'm actually gonna be fitting some USB sockets to the dash at a later stage. Plus, I can't stand these crappy plastic terminals. So that's going in the bin. The next one here is this white wiring. And what they've done, they've taken a feed off a fused terminal, and then they've wired it to another fused terminal. And then they've got another outlet to wherever that was going to. There might have been another stereo connector. Who knows? Let's get rid of that. Oh, that was on there, wasn't it? There you go. Again, crappy wiring that we don't want to know, we don't want to see. Now, here we go. We have got a black cable. Black or brown normally denotes an earth or a ground cable. This has actually been done properly. This has been terminated at the earth crown. However, we will be replacing that for something of a higher quality. So that's gone and out of the way as well. We did spot earlier, uh, once we, while we were removing the dash, there was another earth terminal that went from the cigar lighter down to just um, a screw that holds in the glove box. Again, we'll be removing that. What we've also got here is the antenna lead for your radio. Now, right above my head here, there is a mounting point for an aerial. That snapped off a long time ago. So what we're gonna be doing is removing that out of the way completely because I won't be using that antenna whip again. And that's it for this vehicle. Really happy with that. There's not much being messed around with. Let's crack on with those earth crowns. To get to those earth crowns a bit better, I'm going to be removing this whole fuse panel here. And that is just a case of removing one and two screws. I'm gonna pop them in my pot for safety. And that whole fuse panel can now be moved out of the way safely so I can access all of these earth points. And it looks like most of the electrics for this vehicle, or at least the dash electrics, are mounted here. So I am going to go ahead, I'm gonna start removing those, assessing each terminal as I go for corrosion and condition. 
See that one is heavily corroded there. It's nice and furry. Even the terminal that the crown or that's on the crown is quite furry. They're not so bad, but this one in particular, it's even seized on there. Check out the corrosion on this one here. This is why we check them out. So we're gonna clean that up or replace it entirely. And we're gonna remove that earth crown. This is quite a large earth here. Don't quite know what it's for yet, but it looks to be quite important, bearing in mind the thickness of that earth lead. And again, covered in rust and corrosion. And it doesn't really what matter what order they come off and go back on because they're all terminating at the same point anyway. But yeah, you can see about 50% of all of those earth terminals there are crappy and horrible. So it's a really good thing to remove these earth crowns whilst we're here. So there is one, and you can just see, look, and the corrosion on there, that's not gonna be doing anybody any good. The other one's not so bad actually, because it wasn't really in the line of fire of water. But if I bring it around here in a second, you can actually see a rust stain around here. So the water has been dripping down and touching those terminals. And you can see that there's even a bit of water there. So the water has been dripping down, touching those earth crowns. So at the earliest opportunity, we won't be doing it today, purely because you don't have the time, um, that we're going to be fixing that windscreen seal. And you can hear that. There is some crusty rust under there, so we'll get that welded up and repaired at a later date. And you can even see the puddle. That's not good. In fact, as I'm doing that, if you check down here, can you point in there, Al? And if I move that water, you can actually see it all dripping down, and that's right in the line of fire for that. Um, those earth crowns. So yeah. That's one of the jobs we need to get sorted straight away. To clean these earth crowns up, we're gonna be using two tools, a bench mounted uh, grinder with a wire brush attachment, and also a battery drill with this wire brush attachment as well. The reason we've gone for this sort of conical one is because it'll fit right in there and I've done it before and recently and it cleans them up a tree. I've also removed the screws from the center I'm going to be putting them in a set of grips and then just giving them a good clean up as well because the main aim is we're trying to get the metal on metal on metal contact through to the body so that earth terminals have a good point of contact. So earth crowns I'm going to do the outside on the wire brush then I'm going to stick them in a vise and do the same on the inside with the drill. So when I started this, I said I was gonna look at all of these and assess them for you know, condition and corrosion and stuff like that. Now in total, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of these spade terminals, female spade terminals. And rather than me just cleaning them up and faffing around, I'm just gonna replace them all. I'm gonna be using these brand new spade terminals and I'm gonna be cutting the old ones off, stripping them back and using the correct crimping tool Put these on and they're basically the same factory crimps and you can get them from specialist motor factors or electrical supplies or even the likes of ebay uh, and amazon and you're looking for those open terminals like that non-insulated terminals these are and being earths they don't need to be shrouded because they won't be carrying any of the live current so i'm going to cut these off in fact we'll do you a how-to on one of them so we're literally going to chop them off as close to the end as possible don't need that anymore. I'm going to be taking maybe three, four mil off the end using these wire strippers. Make sure they're all tightened up. I'm going to 
take three four mil off the end of that cable with the wire strippers see that and then going to be using our cable crimping tool and i'm going to set this terminal into the tool give it one click so it's held in there i'm going to insert the cable into the terminal and I'm going to crimp it down. And as simple as that. One new terminal, which as I'm sure you will agree, is miles better than the old crappy corroded ones. So I've just got to do that another eight times. We'll put the earth crowns back on and we'll call that bit done. The earth crowns are all clean and we've brought them back down to fresh metal. I'm going to screw them back in there. Before I tighten it all the way, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a twist so the little barbs on the back of that earth crown can kind of dig into the metal. Then I'll tighten that all the way home. The same with this one. To a point. Just give that a twist. And then all the way home. And what we've got are those terminals here. I'm going to leave this one off because this one's connected to the heater motor. Um, and we're going to be removing that motor in a bit but for now we now have a brilliant earthing point and I think you'll agree not only does it look a hundred times better than it did it's going to operate a hundred times better than it did all for about five minutes work really The major task we're going to be doing today is the fan motor. Now the fan motor seizes quite commonly on these and it's because through lack of use really, um, people tend to use their vans, their campers in the summer where you don't really need your heater fan as much so they don't really use them. Then they get laid up most of the winter, so people don't use them and then that one day they need to use them, they get a little bit seized, they'll start blowing fuses, they'll start melting wiring you just need to get that replaced really um, you can run the vans without and you, they once you move all the heater controls to one way and the vehicle is moving you can get some warm air through however it is better to get that fan motor done it's a simple task really i say that because i've done it 100 times but once you break it down there's not a lot to do we've basically got to remove this box and we've got to put it on the bench disassemble it pop a new motor in and pop it back in. Now, initially, I'll just show you some of the fixings. We have one, two, three, four, five, six large Phillips screw bolts that are holding it into the dash. There may be, depending on the year of the van, there may be a couple of screws from the grill through the front of the van into this heater box as well. So we'll do a little bit of digging later and have a look if see if this is that sort of van. Um, we've got to remove these heater hoses, just put them to one side and then there is some the hot water hoses that come from the engine in the back to the front of the van and they pass through the heater matrix within this heater box here. Um, we have to cut one cable here which is this black and red live or you can just pull it out of, in fact, we won't cut it today, we're just going to pop it out of this um, terminal here. We'll just pop one of the removal tools into the side of that terminal and pop that terminal out of there. And, and it's just the heater cables, which are, in fact, we'll do those first. Let's do those first. We'll bring Ellie around the other side and we'll show you close up how to remove these heater cables. And that'll be task number one. Now we're on the driver's side, I'm going to remove these hoses out of the way, mainly for my purposes and yours. Um, but if I get Ali to have a look just down in here, there is a screw that's going to help us remove this. And we can't remove the heater box without removing this hose. So Ali, if you can see just in here, Now that screw's out, 
I can just prise that off. It's a bit of a difficult one because of the access behind this brake cylinder here. Oh, the brake master cylinder. But that'll be enough for us to access the screws that we need to. And um, yeah, when we remove that heater box, this will just stay in place. Moving on then to the heater cables and their fixings. It's simply a case of lifting this clip with the finger. So that's how it clips in. And then you lift it like that. Remove that, put it in your little safe box. And I'm gonna move the cable out of the way and that's out. Now, I don't know whether we did this, but down here, the bracket that holds our heater cable is actually broken off completely. I, it could well be us, but if we're feeling this plastic now, it's really brittle. So I'm kind of not surprised. So I'm gonna take that off. And that's what's left of it. That could well have been me when I was removing the dash, but that is really, really brittle plastic. So we'll do our best to bond that back on. If not, I may have another one of these tops upstairs. So let's put it in our safe box. And move on to these two hoses. Now, one of them is water in, and it passes water, hot water through the heater matrix, and the other hose is back out again. They're gonna need either a flat head or a seven or six millimeter. Now, what's interesting is these are Jubilee clips, being an early version of this van. Later have the really awkward, um, but quite effective spring clips that you have to grip with a pair of um, you know, pliers. You grip them together and slide them off. Whereas these are Jubilee clips, they're probably gonna be a little easier to undo. So let me go and get the required tool and we shall remove these two Jubilee clips. When I remove them, we're gonna spill some water. So I'm gonna put a container on the floor um, just while we plug those hoses. To remove these Jubilee clips in particular, I have a six millimeter socket on a long extension bar. It makes my life a little bit easier. And down below, we've got a little catchment tray to remove or to catch any of the fluids that we'll be spilling. I've also got myself a couple of M14 wheel studs, actually, which sounds a bit odd, but I'm gonna plug the hoses with those. So they're both off, remove, undo that one a bit more. No water. Typical. I have got a couple of tools now to help me undo the one, two, three, four, five, and six big screws. We've got a large Phillips screwdriver, and I've also got a Phillips attachment on the end of my socket as well. Now, these screws at the back that are against the firewall, firewall, the bulkhead, the front bulkhead, they're known to rust in place. So I'm going to, that's why I'm using the ratchet as well. Uh, you can help things by possibly squirting some WD-40 in from the other side to release those. But if the worst comes to the worst and they do snap, once this heater box is out of the way, they are possible to be able to drill out the remaining part of the screw and then tap it. So let's crack straight on with the most difficult ones, which are the two at the back. Um, and let's see how they go. Oh, I think we might be lucky because that is start coming apart really easily already. So great start there. Getting a bit tougher as it comes out a bit more. One down.
Ooh, she rusty. Okay, I'll go around the other side, I think. That's nasty. Right, let's try that one. That's fine. Each one of the screws has come out really nicely, apart from this one and the same the other side. The other one, the other side has actually snapped. So that will give me a perfect opportunity to drill it out and retap it and show you how we do that. But what we're going to do is remove the front grille and see if we can get the other side of this panel and just clean up the threads because it'll turn. But I can tell that that is very stiff there. So I'm probably going to soak it with a bit of um, WD-40 this side and the other and then we'll clean up that thread. So the point at which we're looking at is right up in there and you can see how corroded this one is up here and it'll be the same the other side so we'll get some WD and on the other side and get that cleaned up. Boom. All six screws are removed, heater cables removed, the pipes are removed, so that should now come out. He says, I haven't spotted any screws the other side. No, here we go. Uh -huh. The wiring at the bottom. The thing it's caught on is this piece down here. So I'm just going to lift it above that. There we go. Excellent. Oh, the last thing. Keep you on tender hooks now. I'm going to re remove black and red from this terminal so I'm going to be using a pick tool putting it in that terminal there and that has slid out of there so there we go in fact what it has done now there's a good point look at that the live to that was so corroded it's just pulled out so that will come out so there's yet another thing we've got to change but it's good we do it now rather than it fail on a really cold winter's day when we need it most. So, I'm gonna call that a blessing in disguise. So after releasing that terminal, or the cable snapping, we've now got the wiring loom for the heater motor and the earth for the heater motor, of which we've already changed the terminal. So that needs to come with the whole thing. And that is out. I've just poured a bit of water out of it because I forgot it was for the water. But apart from that, that is now ready to go on the bench and we'll start stripping it down to put the new motor in. Whilst the heater box is removed, it's a very good time to replace all this hose and this hose is for the wash jets on the front of the vehicle. Now, after doing a little bit of digging, you can see that the hose in areas is pinched and even behind the washer jet here, it's actually at such an angle that it is pinched and it's rock hard in that position. So it really wouldn't be providing the water pressure needed um, to get the jet up onto the screen. So what I'm gonna do, I can feel the back of the washer jet. Now's a good time to replace them if you want to. You can get new washer jets from any of the 
um, VW spares places, or you can get off the likes of eBay, you can get a triple wash um, upgrade. So it's got three jets instead of one. But what I'm doing there is I've literally just made a, a cut in the hose on the back of that washer jet. And now I'm gonna pull that through. It's not attached to the washer jet anymore. There is a little black collar on the end of it. See these here, these little black collars. There is another one down here that I will just remove first before peeling the hose through. I know it's not that visually representative and I apologize about that, but it'll get better later, I promise. Okay, let's peel that off. Peel the hose through, come on. There we go. And that is the state of the hose under there. Dry, cracked brittle and pinched. That's not going to help the pressure of our water jet at all, is it? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start doing this kind of methodically, really. I'm going to remove this piece of hose right here. Peeling that collar back first and using the blade. Dropping things. I'm going to put a small incision there because you won't peel that, that hose off. That's got no flexibility in it whatsoever anymore. So I'm going to put a little slice in it there, be very careful. There we go. That's proper rock hard, isn't it? And then out of my new reel of cable, I'm going to kind of stretch that out there and mark it and cut it about here. There you go, that's my new bit of hose. I'm going to replace those black collars. Pop it back onto that T-piece. It's a cold day today, so you might find on a day like this you might need to warm it up a little bit, make it a little bit more pliable. But that is now on there, look. I'm going to replace that little black collar there. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to feed it through the metalwork, put the collar on the other side, and squeeze it right into the washer jet. And there's our first bit replaced. It's going to go through there. I'm going to pop the little hose on the end. Bring it back through. And squeeze it onto my washer jet. Oh, what a pain. Come on. That wasn't playing ball at all. So I've decided to remove it instead. So what we'll do, we'll clean up that area and it just so happens, got a fresh new one in the packet with a new rubber seal. So that one, gone. That new one can pop back in there, but that's not before we feed the hose through. And what will it do? We'll feed the hose through, attach at this end and then Pop it back in. There she is. So new hose, black rubber, and the new washer jet. Just going to squeeze that all through the hole. Make sure the rubber is sitting in place nicely. And then, boom. Top down.
I'm gonna now replace all of the hose under the dash. If we need to replace the other washer jet, we will. I'll bring you back when we've got to replace this hose right here. Now this hose runs right down to the washer bottle and we've got to drop the washer bottle out the bottom. So once I've done all these bits, I'll come back to that and we'll go through that with you. We've now replaced both of those hoses. They're attached to the washer jets and look at them, they look lovely. But the last one, which is down to the washer bottle, is just here, if I can peel that back. And this goes all the way down the front of the vehicle and connects to the washer bottle. So, I'm gonna remove that little black collar, the retaining clip, We'll go around the front of the vehicle, we'll slide it through the dash and then we'll take you underneath where you're going to need a 10mm socket to drop that washer bottle out of there. Let's go do it. The old brittle hose that we want to replace is this one coming down here. And it goes all the way through the front. We don't need to remove this bit, but we do need to get underneath and I'll show you the washer bottle now. This is the washer bottle here. It's held in by two, sorry, one, two, three 10mm bolts. And I've got a tub here, just in case, to catch the water as it comes down. And when it comes down, I mean, there should hardly be anything in here anyway. But I'm just going to throw that bolt in there. One, two. Um, and then you'll see the motor, which, oh, sorry, the little pump, which pushes the fluid up to the screen. The connector and the hose connected to it. So I'm going to support it with one hand and do it with the other and then lower it down gently. Okay. And here we go. Whoopsie. That should have washer fluid in it, but it's just got water in it, so it wasn't going to do anybody any favours anyway. Luckily it doesn't smell. Sometimes these bottles can get really full of algae and all sorts of nasties, and they can smell pretty bad. So let's see if I can now move that without pouring it everywhere. And I'll show you the pump. So that's the pump there with the electrical connector. What we want to do is just remove this hose from the pump there and then replace it with a new one. Oops. I might or just pour some more water out first. There we go. Remove the collar. Put the collar on my new hose. Oh, that's tough. Right, the outlet on that pump motor is actually a bit bigger than the others. So you might find you need to warm it up. However, I'm going to persevere. See if we can get that on there. Cool. Now with the excess hose that I haven't trimmed yet, I'm just going to follow the route of the old hose and uh, that, can I connect that together? If I connect that together might be able to pull it through. Let's have a go, shall we? Ooh. It 
So it's just a little Jubilee clip in there. I'm trying to feed it through. Not Jubilee clip, a cable tie. Just gonna try and feed it through. There she goes. Cool, so that's fed through. Bit of a struggle. And I know I have the luxury of doing this indoors. I do hope you do too. But if not, maybe choose a warmer day, a drier day to do this. Here we go, feed that through. I'm gonna hold that washer bottle up there. Getting it in the right orientation. Now it's empty of water, it's a lot easier obviously. I'm gonna fish out my bolts. them in there. And then put them back up and that should be all we need. One horrible piece of hose. Replaced with the new stuff. Good. So that's got a little bit of movement there, just because, don't want it too tight. Now we're gonna feed it up to that last T-piece and uh, trim it to length, put the black collar on, call it done. So it fed over there. Go into there, go into there, cool. And there we have it. Nice, tidy, new, flexible, no kinks. What we've got to do is fill it up with water, which is what you do down here. That's where you fill up your washer fluid. Ugh. Fill it with fluid, give it a test, adjust the washer jets, cool it down. But first, lunch. Now we've got the heater box out of the van, we can effectively restore it. We've got to change the heater motor, we've got to give it a damn good clean, and depending on the condition of the foams, we're going to replace all the foams in it using the Brickworks kit. Now it's designed to replace all the foams in this or a Caravel box, um, because the Caravel ones do differ slightly because they've got different flaps inside them. So the first things first is to remove the top section from the bottom. Now, depending if you've got an early or a late, they fix together in two different ways. This is an earlier van. So, we have these metal clips here. If you have a later van, these tabs are actually glued together. As you can see here, they're apart. But on later ones, they're heat glued, they're almost heat welded together, these plastic tabs, and you have to use something like a multi-tool, the vibrating tool or reverberating tool, to slice them, slice through them. Then once you've sliced through them, you can drill a hole 
and cable tie them together because you can't glue them back together or you can cable tie and seal them with the likes of a silicon or a Sikaflex or something. So to remove this top then, we are going to, let me just go and get a magnetic tray. You're gonna remove all of these clips. And just follow the seam of the box, really. <laughs> That's the remainder of the water you can hear dripping out of the uh, heater matrix. <laughs> that one didn't want to hang around, did it? One. That's it. There's a Phillips screw here and a Phillips screw there, just above the motor. That should be it. that be that. Now if I point some things out to you, now we've got the flaps in here and that's where the foams deteriorate. So we will be replacing the foams in this instance, you see that? They just get fragile and just completely fall to pieces. And if you want a decent heater box, it's worth replacing those as well. And there's, look, they're here and they're just falling apart. So. That's definitely what's going to happen today. Put that to one side. Now this is the motor we are going to be replacing. And it just pulls out very easily. But first of all, let's remove these terminals. You've got a live. Ugh. And an earth. The earth has the male spade and the live has the female spade. I think I might change those much like we did on the earth points earlier. And then this should just pop out. Gosh, stuck in there. And there we have it. I'll try and save some of that seal. I know I said we were replacing it. But save some of it might as well so there we have it and if you can feel that I'll show you this now I was gonna put like a 12 volt source on here just to show you but even that that should re rotate freely and the motor isn't gonna turn that at all it does move and you could loosen it up with oil but for the sake of 35 quid I think these cost might as well just replace the whole thing out. So, let's just pry that rubber off, just in case we need to use it again. Oh, important to keep that rubber as well, which goes there. So I'm doing this just in case you don't have 
with a seal kit for yours. It's good to save these. You can use them on your next rubber and it is very important that you keep that rubber seal because it obviously seals the fresh air or the cool air from the warm air. So that's gonna go in the bin. We don't need that anymore. Right, a bit more orientation then. We are gonna be cleaning all of this. I'll get the pressure washer out later. Um, we'll just blast that down and clean it. So for that, I'm gonna remove these, uh, this resistor here, that's part of the wiring loom. And that can come out entirely. The next part is the heater matrix. Now you get hot water flowing in and the cooler, uh, cooler water flowing out and then the fan blows air through the heater matrix and that's how you get warm air into your cabin. But it's highly likely that this is absolutely filthy and what we'll do, we'll get some compressed air and blow that out as well. So if I'm gonna pull that out now. So the old rubber seal is holding that in and there we go. Come on, there we go. And look at the state of that. So this is probably what all of yours is gonna look like. That doesn't actually stay on there, that can come off. It's just stuck onto the rubber. So there you go. You get all the dirt and grit. Now, don't get me wrong, that's still 35 years worth of stuff in there, so it's not so bad, but we're gonna be replacing all of these rubbers. We'll blow that out with the air hose and we'll clean this up as well. So let's go on it. Now we have all the flaps and some of the rubber seals out of the heater box sections. We're just gonna clean them up. The old um, sections here, they were held in by these plastic plates. And they're fairly easy to pop out, they're just plastic clips. And what we'll do, I've got the bin just down here I'll clean up all of them, put them to one side, and then where those plates have been, because they're so deteriorated, they'll just brush off. So the replacement should be fairly easy. Um, again, you know, we can just pop those off. Brush that off there. And that old foam is just so dry. We can do that to all of the sections. If you need to clean up any others, with say Scotch Brite and some brake clean, that's not a bad idea. But it's pretty much all there. I can see that the old self-adhesive panel is still on but the foam is just completely deteriorated and again we can remove as much of that as possible but I'm not going to be too upset if there's any of that plastic left the main thing we need to get rid of is that foam layer and then clean it up with a solvent because we need our new stickers to stick onto something decent but even that as a before and after that's pretty damn good isn't it Cool. Enjoy as we wash all of the wash and clean all of these bits.
Whilst we've got the opportunity then, we're going to give this a really, really good clean. Um, just makes sense, we've got it all broken down as much as we can and just spraying a little bit of um, some of our Valet Pro all-purpose cleaner onto everything, agitating it with a brush after blowing it out like we have we'll just put this in the best position and we'll just use a couple of microfiber towels just to dry it all off but bearing in mind I plan for this to be my winter driver my winter daily I want to be able to uh, get warm and once the heating system on these are you know once the cooling system's fully bled and you're using the right coolant and you know, everything's working as it should. They actually warm up really quickly. So, if I can get that done now, whilst I've got the opportunity, then I will. So, 10 minutes of cleaning, totally worth it. Whilst we've got the heater box out and clean, it's a very good idea to replace the foam. The kit we have got is from Brickworks. You may have heard me speak about them before. They provide a multitude of bits and pieces for T3s, T4s, and a lot of other VW type vans as well. Um, it's a comprehensive kit. I have laid it all out as per their instructions there. And it's basically everything you need to replace the foam and all the flaps, the ventilation flaps and the seals around the bottom and stuff like that. So what we're gonna do is work through it together. And well, it comes with a huge instruction manual anyway, so um, I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out yourself. However, we'll work through it together and put the stickers on the box. One of the first stickers to go on then is on our new motor. You saw the old motor we took out it was seized and dry and horrible. However, we now have this new version from Mail. however you pronounce that word. And it's basically like for like. It's even got the male and female um, spade connectors ready for you to just plug and play straight in. But one of the first rubbers, if I get the old motor out of the bin, One of the first rubbers to go on it is to replace the one that went sort of around the bottom. Ugh, um, so that's the first one we're going to do. Look at these, exactly like for like. We like that. So we are going to use, according to the destructions, seven millimeter by five millimeter, which is this stuff here. said to use approximately 700 millimeters of this stuff and there's 800 in the roll so once we've unrolled it you can take the backing off and start sticking And there we have it. First one down. We're gonna use our blade wherever I've put it.
to just trim off the edge. And then we have the first seal on, on our new motor, which can't wait to do. So, one down. What this may need now, bearing in mind you can follow the instructions, is a nice little time lapse of me sticking all the bits together. Let's go. Before we bolt everything back together, I just want to test the fan motor. So I've got a 12 volt battery and I've got what's called a probe tester. Now you can just use, you know, a couple of jumper leads from the positive and negative to test the battery. But this probe tester, you can apply a 12 volt source as to, you know, anywhere you want to, but it's very good for testing an earth circuit or a life circuit or continuity. So I've got my earth clip on the earth side of the motor or the ground side of the motor. If I apply that probe onto the positive terminal, you see the green light, it shows that you've got uh, continuity and I'm just gonna press it here. And you can hear that fan motor working. And just as a bit of a test, I've pulled the old motor back out of the bin, just so I can show you how tired and seized this thing is. Now, you're gonna have to come in close because it doesn't spin, but you can hear an audible click. You might even be able to see it move a little bit. So. And if I try it, reverse polarity. It doesn't even move. You can hear an audible click. You can hear something trying to move, but that's so stiff on there. That was never gonna work. So, back in the bin. But we know this works. So, what we're gonna do is put it all back together exactly in the way it came apart, and then we'll come back when we're putting it back in a van for you. Before that heater motor goes in, I'm just gonna take this last opportunity just to clean up a few things, really. I've got these super duper uh, wet wipes. These are from my local auto factors, motor factors, and they pretty much cut through anything. And I'm just, just gonna go over all this stuff because I know I'm gonna be under the dash again in the future. So to prevent me getting all crappy and dirty, if we just give everything, you know, the wiring and everything really, just a bit of a wipe down. Makes you feel a bit better about the whole job. And it looks a bit better, really. Um, you feel a bit better about it all. Um, what we'll do, we'll finish off with giving the dash a wipe over. I have, um, you'll see by a little bit of a time lapse we did, that I have been over the dash with um, a cleaner and mopped it down and everything else. Um, before this goes in, I've tapped or re-threaded or just cleaned up the thread on all of these holes. This one, as you saw, um, snapped as it came out. So we've drilled and tapped that to accept a new M6 screw headed bolt. Um, that's about it really. So yeah, just gonna spend a couple of minutes doing the last bits of cleanup, just checking I've done everything, just checking all my connections are good and tight and everything else. And yeah, then we'll slam that airbox back in with a new heater motor. So with a little bit of negotiating, a little bit of wiggling, only the smallest amount of cracking, uh, it's in. So I'm gonna get my, my box of screws and the process of putting the box in is gonna be pretty much the reverse of it coming out. Um, I'm gonna go first with the two of the most awkward screws, which are actually down here. Um, the one that is, that we had to re-drill and tap. I'm using a nice long screwdriver, making sure the hose is out of the way so I can see. And that should thread in there nicely. There we go, she's in. 
so that was the one we drilled and tapped because it snapped because I didn't have any patience so I'm just putting them all in lightly gonna put them all in just lightly make sure it is everything everything is happy in its location that's two so you know that's the one that was a bit of a pain when that came out there so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna put that on the wire wheel, wire wheel really quickly and we'll just clean that one up but in the meantime let's pop this one in down here and the other one's gonna go down here and don't forget this one here oh cramp <laughs> um, this one here, this uh, holds in that water pipe as well, so it goes through a P clip and bolts on one of the water pipes to the bodywork. So that's that one in now. Oh, this is interesting. Bit of uh, archaeology. Now, I thought it was a bit weird that these hoses had Jubilee clips and I was wondering whether that's factory or not. Let me just take a quick look. No, they were. Yeah, like I said before, um, they normally have the old uh, compression clips and I thought by the imprint on that pipe that these hoses have been played with before but I was wrong, so we call that. Oh, what I did want to point out, overnight, because this is day two, overnight I used an epoxy resin to just bond on the broken plastics again, so I did that before we went home and let it set overnight. So right, that's both the hoses released. Let me just clean up that screw and I'll be back in a tick. So now I'm happy, now I know they're all in, I'm happy to tighten them all up. The last two things to bolt that in then, or to make that a complete installation, is to connect the water pipes, one and two, making sure you've got the right orientation, and then the cables for the heater. Don't worry too much about any air locks in this system. If you come to run your vehicle after uh, changing this heater, there will be some air in the system. However, it is within the heater matrix system, not the main cooling system for the vehicle. That being said, when you run the vehicle for the first time after changing this, put all of the controls over to the right, which means that the heat will be at its maximum, um, and the flaps will be at their maximum to throw heat up in here. Then once you've done a good journey with that coolant circulated, any of the air bubbles in that um, heater matrix circuit will work, them, work their way out. However, if you are concerned, then we will be covering bleeding the system entirely in an up and coming video. That means that one is gonna be there. I'll never be able to get to it. The last thing to connect up is this heater control panel. So this is the levers that control um, either the heat coming through, which is that one, and we know that because this cable runs down to underneath the front of the dash and controls the valve in the water pipe. This one here, which is, is that bottom? Yeah, that bottom one, that will feed through this cable tie. Come on. Feed through the cable tie. Connect down to that bottom lever, if I can get it in. There you go. And then it will rest on that bracket just here. Now this is the one I've repaired already, so I've got to be super careful. 
but you can pretty much follow the cables and how they've how they lay in the van. So this one here, if I can get that in, there we go. That's for that one there. Ugh. In fact, that'll go in that way. And then it will lay in there like that. And I'm gonna grab my clip, which I've put in my box. Put the clip in the plastic. Make sure the lines mark up the telltale signs of where the clip once was, pop that in, and hopefully, there you go, that's in. Again, I've got to be very careful with this one. Expect me to break it. However, I'm try not to. So I'm gonna make sure that's in position. It's gonna feed in there. Matches up with its lines. Come on now. Come on. There we go, we're in. So now, this one at the bottom actually does control that lever, which it probably hasn't done in a number of years, unless I did break it as I remove the um, as I removed the dash before, but I don't think I did. So there's a last pain in the ho pain in the backside hose, and that's this one just here. Now I'm probably not going to be want to be filmed doing this because it's going to involve some swear words, but you've got to try and fit this hose down behind this cylinder and screw it in. So let's give it a quick go. Oh, we've done it. Check it out. I've just got to find the screw, pop it in there, and that's your installation complete. And there we have it. We have done an awesome job today, even if I say so myself. We have ripped the heater out, replaced the fan motor. We've done all the felts inside as well, cleaned all the inside, so we now that's gonna run at 100% efficiency. We've taken a look at the wiring, we've replaced the earth, um, terminals at the earth crowns we've cleaned up the earth crowns and we've taken the time to replace all the hoses for the washer jet so we've completely refurbed under the dash and like i said uh, before if you're taking a dash out you really only want to do it once and do all these jobs at the same time so if you want to learn how to now put the dash back in check the video down in the description where we show you how to remove the dash and put it all back in Thanks again for joining us. Please consider subscribing. If you like the video, hit like in the bottom corner. If you like any of my merch or you want to find out anything else about Coombe Valley Campers, please head over to our website, www.coombevalleycampers.co.uk or follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks again. See you next time. Bye-bye.